Welcome back. It is Thursday, January 11th in the NBA. My three best bets are on the way. Let's recap yesterday, a four in one day. Very good. So close to that sweep. We're going to get that sweep one of these days too. Technically, our video did sweep. Let's talk about it. In the video, I talked about Jalen Brown's over in points plus rebounds. Easy cash. Lauer Markkinen's over in points. Easy cash. Jabari Smith Jr.'s over in points. Another easy winner. I got to watch that game in person. And Jabari, wonderful work, man. Now, I did add two plays after the fact, and one of them was our loser. We had Quickly's over in PRAs. Slow start. He got it done rather easily. And Keldon Johnson, our only loser of the day, took his over 19 and a half points. Scored 17. I think he only shot eight times. Didn't play 30 minutes like I thought he would as they blew out the Pistons. Either way, a four and one day. Let's continue that momentum. Like I said, a third straight winning day. Hey, let's do it again. Now we are in a change of scenery. I drove from Chicago last night in a little bit of the snow flurries into Milwaukee. It's actually snowing right outside as I speak. It's awesome here. I'm going to go to the Bucks and Celtics game tonight. And I have a pick in that video real quick. But there also is a great pick on sleeper yeah great segue austin they are right now discounting Giannis for new users down from 30 30 and a half points whatever his line is down to 0 0.5 points it's the free square it's only for new users best part about sleeper though is this not only do you get that free square if you sign up using our code cos but they will also match your first deposit up to 500 bucks they still got that promo going on right now so not only would you get a free square for Giannis to score one point which i'm pretty confident he'll do that you also get that 500 dollars deposit match up to 500 so take advantage of that details down below top of the description but you guys came here for some nba picks let's continue this run let's try to have a fourth straight winning day and let's get that sweep we had a three and oh video sweep last uh, yesterday i don't have any added plays today we just got three and i'm gonna go to actually the game that we already talked about that we got that boston celtics going on the road to take on the bucks my first pick is going to be in that game and just like yesterday where i took a houston rocket i was backing a guy on the road cheering for him in the stands didn't get a lot of nice looks Kristaps Porzingis, my first pick of the day, over 19 and a half points, minus 104 on FanDuel. Now, in the graphic, you will say playable up to 22 and a half. You will see that. Now, obviously, if this line goes up to 22 and a half, I would not play it, assuming everything else is equal and everyone is healthy on the Celtics. However, I think there is a very good chance either one of Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum does not play today. And heck, would not surprise me if both of those guys didn't play. Now, I will talk about that in depth, but Kristaps Porzingis is my favorite bet of the day. Only negative right now is he's only available on FanDuel. Now, I don't know if that changes by the time I get this video live because it takes me some time to edit the videos, but I still do think that Kristaps is in for a great matchup today. And if one of those guys is rested, I think we had a good shot. And that's what the Celtics have been doing the past month. They basically, if they have a back-to-back, they rest a guy on the first half, and then they play the. They rest some guys on the second half. So Christos Porzingis did not play yesterday. He was rested. They called it knee, a knee injury, a knee management day, if you will. I'm very confident he plays tonight, and I think that we could see Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown or both be rested because you look at yesterday. They had to go into overtime. Each of those guys played 42 minutes. Derek White also 42 minutes. Horford, who's definitely not playing today, he played 38 minutes, and Drew Holiday played 39. So would it surprise anyone out there if they rest any of these guys? No. I mean, that's this, those are five guys in their normal rotation that plays a lot of minutes. And even if they don't rest, those guys are all coming in with, you know, not great legs. They're playing a ton of minutes, having to travel on a back-to-back. Kristaps -back. coming in here. He didn't play last night. He's got fresh legs, and I expect them to play through him a little bit more. And we've kind of seen him actually play pretty well this season. He's averaged 19.8 points per game. And you look at him, 20-plus points in 14 of 27 games. Obviously, 14 of 27, not the best hit rate you're looking for. But you look at games, he didn't play a lot of minutes. He's played 20-plus points in 14 of 23 games. That's 61% of the time when he's seen 25 or more minutes. They've been involved in, obviously, a ton of blowouts. But given that the spread here is Celtics plus 5, I'm very shocked that number one, the Celtics are underdogs. And number two, they're five point underdogs. I mean, this is a team that has the best record in the NBA. That tells me someone is resting today. I'm not saying the books have insider info, but someone's resting today. And I'm surprised FanDuel even gave Kristaps Porzingis a line because I think Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum rests today. We're going to see Kristaps involved a lot more offensively. And we saw in the first matchup between these two teams, Kristaps scored 21 points on 15 field goal attempts in 26 minutes. So hit the over. Everyone played. Derek White was out there. Drew Holiday was out there. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, everyone was out there and even dealt with foul trouble and still got the job done. Now, I think this is a guy that's locked into 33-ish minutes per game. Obviously, he could get into foul trouble again. It's Giannis coming into the paint. Hopefully, Chris Stapps can avoid that. But he's had a great track record against the Bucs, especially as a member of the Wizards. And this is a guy, when he attempts shots, he goes over. He's over this line in 11 of 15 games with 13 or more shots. 
I think he's getting at least 13 shots, even if everyone played. Like we think about who's going to guard him, Brook Lopez. Lopez, what does he do? Once he gets it down from offense, goes to defense, he sits in the paint. He doesn't come out, and we see Kristaps is going to have wide open three pointers all night long, and he's going to be shooting them. Kristaps, we know he's not afraid of pulling one from 30 feet deep. So you look at him, two plus three pointers on Vandal, minus 250. This season, Kristaps, 14 games with two threes or more made. He's over this line, 12 of 14 games. When he knocks down threes, get to the free throw line. He can do his thing. I really like Kristaps Porzingis. Like I said, I would play this up to about 22 and a half if Jalen Brown is out or Jason Tatum. If both of them are out, I would definitely like that at 22 and a half. I think if one of them is out, probably only goes to like 20 and a half or 21 and a half. So obviously stay tuned for that. Now my second pick is going to be a none. You know, we got to Milwaukee and you know what? It's nearly, it's below freezing out here. So you know what? I'm taking an under and it's not going to be correlated to that. But I really like Dwight Powell of the Dallas Mavericks under 17 and a half points, rebounds and assists, PRAs minus 115 on bet three, six, five. I would play this at 16 and a half. Now, obviously we haven't had the greatest track record on unders, but I really like this one here today. And I will talk about it in a one moment. Now, if you need an individual line points is probably the way to go, but I think PRAs is probably where I want to settle with Dwight Powell. Now you look at on the season, if you were just to pull up stats and people put, probably post this on Twitter, uh, Dwight Powell is under in 28 of 35 games. Yeah, no duh. He's out. He's under in a lot of games because he hasn't played a ton this season in a lot of those games. However, I obviously he's in for a bigger workload tonight given the Mavericks injuries. And there is one guy that I do need to note. Derek Lively, the second, is injured, not expected to play. There is a chance. It's the NBA. A guy could be doubtful and play the next day. That's obviously a chance. I'm not expecting a Derek Lively to be in there tonight, and the books don't either. That's why he has a 6, 17 and a half PRA line, but it always plays in our favor, locking in and under sometimes early. Sometimes it doesn't play in your favor too, but let's look at 11 games this season when Dwight Powell played 20 or more minutes. Now, Powell has had 7, 11, 11, 11, 11. I think that's four 11s, 16, 18, 18, 19, 19, and 32. PRA is going under this line in 6 of 11, so a pretty good hit rate there. Two of the losses did come on the hook when he ended with 18, and really has 19 or less, so really close to this line in all 10 of 11 games he's actually had some good games against the Timberwolves of all teams now look at who's out for tonight obviously Derek Lively Lively the second we don't expect him to play but big guy ever heard of this guy Luka Doncic expected out tonight so while yeah Luka obviously contains a lot of usage what also he does is makes a lot easier for Dwight Powell Dwight Powell hopefully he's not watching this doesn't have really much of an offensive game. If he hits a post fadeaway, I'll pay someone like a million bucks in the comments because that's just Dwight Powell doesn't do that. What he does is he sets picks, rolls through the hoop, and hopes that you throw him a lob or he gets a layup or something like that. Sure, that could happen. However, Luka Doncic obviously commends so much defensive attention, which is why Dwight Powell can get some easy lay-ins. However, with no Luka out there, just going to be Kyrie Irving. I anticipate Kyrie being able to go out there and shoot the shots. We know OG Ananobi is going to be on the other side, probably guarding Kyrie. And so I think that Dwight Powell is just not going to get a lot of open looks, which is why I like his under points today. But not only that, you look at Dwight Powell, this is just not a good matchup. I mean, since the arrival of OG Ananobi, the last five games, Knicks, lowest field goal percentage on shots within five feet of the hoop. Dwight Powell, he's not attempting literally anything besides a shot that's within five feet of the hoop. Also, allow the 10th fewest points per game in the paint. And they're also a team that don't give up a lot of rebounds, don't give up a ton of assists. And also, during the same time span, best defensive rebounding percentage, sixth fewest second chance points. So you could just take the points if you want to, but I just don't think Dwight Powell is going to get a ton of rebounds tonight, too. Hartenstein is going to aggressively attack the off offensive glass. So probably you're going to see Powell have to box him out. And Powell's not locked just because there's so many guys out. Powell is not locked into minutes. If they come out and the starters are struggling, Powell is not guaranteed to play 30 minutes like you know you might expect given that they're so depleted. But three games last year against the Knicks, or his last three versus the Knicks, three PRAs in 31 minutes. Great job. 14 in 18 minutes and 12 PRAs in 21 minutes. If I had to guess tonight, Powell probably averages close to, I don't know, I'm going to say probably 25 minutes. Now there is a chance he plays 15 and they just say, get the heck out of here. You stink. And he could play 30, but I don't see him playing 30 plus minutes. That's just not how they normally play his minutes. I'll take my chances with Dwight Powell under. Like if he goes crazy, we'll probably retire unders for a few days because that would just be on brand if he drops like 15 points tonight. Now my third play of the day, Will be a same game parlay. I haven't had the best track record on this, but I really like this one today. Hopefully, we can get these SGPs on on a good track. Now it's going to be a two leg same game parlay. Include some guys on the thumbnail: Kevin Durant, twenty five plus points, and LeBron James, twenty plus points, minus one twenty on DraftKings. Now most books were around minus one twenty to minus one thirty or so. There was, I believe. Durant, I would not be surprised if his line keeps going up and up and up, and that probably juices the same game parlay a little bit more. If you need a juice reducer, like you could 
figure out I, I like LeBron to get some assists tonight too. And I actually was just going to take Durant's regular over in points, but I think the LeBron 20 plus points is pretty safe tonight. I'm pretty confident he gets that done. I'll talk about why, but I just think I'd rather take Durant down to 25 instead of taking a 26 and a half point line for him. Now you look at so far, LeBron 20 plus and three straight has only had 20 plus points in 26 of 35. So not the best hit rate, but his last three games versus Phoenix this season, 21, 32 and 31 points. So cooking Phoenix and we know LeBron, man, it's the show, man. I mean, you know, on TNT, everyone's going to be watching this game. He's going to be aggressive, and I don't think the Suns have an answer for him. They don't really have the greatest rim protection, and I just don't think they have an answer for him if he gets a full head of steam. Sure, Durant probably guards him, but I don't really think Durant wants that smoke if LeBron's coming down the paint. So we know these two guys, obviously two icons, will go down as two of the best, I don't know, 15 best players. I'm just trying to think where Durant, probably two of the best, top 10, 15, I don't know best players in the NBA history. These are two guys that are going to show up against each other. And I am confident LeBron scores 20 plus. And then Durant on the other side, 25 plus in 26 of 30 games this year. He has absolutely cooked this team too. He's just been destroying, uh, He's destroying this this uh, Lakers team. He scored 39, 38, and 31 against them. So volume is great. Team that gives up a lot of threes, but obviously we know Durant, one of the best three-point shooters, you know, statistically in the NBA. I just think we'll have a lot of open looks tonight. Not a lot of really wide open looks, although it's the Lakers. They could give him some wide open looks. I just think at the end of the day, he has a big night. So same game parlay, 20, same game parlay 25 Durant, 20 for LeBron. That's my third and final play of the day. No added plays today. I will probably be posting some added uh, some NFL plays for our dub clubs. So if you want to join the dub club, definitely do it. What are you doing? It's only $5.99 a month, and you get all our plays early. So definitely take advantage of that. Yesterday, I got the tour of the dub club facilities in Chicago, which was super cool. I'll be posting that in the uh, video for our second channel next week. But you guys have a wonderful Thursday. If you're at the Celtics and Bucks game tonight, hopefully you get there safely as it's still snowing outside. But I will see you there. If you want to meet me, just DM me on Twitter or something. Or if you're in the Dub Club in the Discord, at me too. Let's have a wonderful day, wonderful Thursday. Let's have that 3 0 sweep we deserve. I'll see you guys back again in the next one. It's Austin signing out. I should be in the same scenery tomorrow, but change the scenery for two days from now. You guys have a great day. See you in the next one. Peace.